The end of March marks one year of monthly recaps for the LEGO speedrunning community. Thank you all for your support and keeping this awesome community alive and thriving. Now, let's get into March's recap. A lot has happened in this month in the LEGO Star Wars games. Starting off, Carcoon set four different LEGO Star Wars 2 any percent world records on the PC version of the game. On the 8th, he achieved a time of 1 hour, 51 minutes and 5 seconds, improving by just over a minute from previous month. Two days later, he shaved another 2 minutes off of this, getting a 149.18, a first sub 150 on PC. Then on the 22nd, he saved another 4 minutes, getting a 1 hour, 45 minutes and 12 second time. And lastly, on the 25th, he improved it yet again by just 19 seconds, getting a 144.54. Next up with The Force Awakens. After preparing for it most of February, on the 9th, I completed a 100% speedrun of the game, getting a time of 5 hours, 26 minutes and 8 seconds, cutting almost 3.5 hours off of the previous world record held by Brico. This run featured a lot of new strats not known at the time of the last world record, and a lot of rewriting in the free play and hub segments of the run. During this run, I also set a new all mini kids world record in this game, getting a time of 3 hours, 14 minutes and 19 seconds, saving almost 9 minutes to the run from last month. We can't forget the complete saga, of course, which started its month strong on the 10th of March with the announcement of the TCS Any% Tournament Season 4, which will happen during the summer of this year. This announcement already motivated a lot of people to run the game in the last couple of weeks, and I'm sure it's going to get even more active as we get closer to the summer. For more info about this event, make sure to check out Zach's video in the description. We also had one new record this month with Saber and Jay Blakey on the 16th taking the free play co-op world record by 5 seconds, which was previously held by Zack and Erod has for over two years. Next up on the 30th, we had a couple of runners organize the first ever TCS Any% Relay. The format was a three-way race between three groups of runners who split up the episodes so each person would do different segments of the run. The runners that took part in this were Chesswiz, Carcoon, Gilded Phantom, Core Competence, Garrison Larson, Charzite, Virtual Floop, and Jablakey. I'm not going to spoil the outcome of the race, so if you're curious to see how it went, go check out the full VOD of the event in the description of this video. We hope to see the community organize more of these smaller events in the future. And last but not least, after a lot of hours of testing by the mod team, it was finally 100% confirmed that the dynamic grass seen in levels such as Invasion of Dambu and Endor is the reason for the most common crash in the game, Bunker Crash. After a community vote about this matter concluded on the 31st, it was decided that deleting the grass files with a specially designed batch script is now allowed on all leaderboards of the game, which will make running it a lot more fair for everybody with a major hardware dependent run killer now being fixed. This change does not affect any previous runs and it's just a precaution that runners can now use to avoid crashing. If you're curious to learn more about this, make sure to read the document in the description of this video. This month saw a bit of 3.0 action with the addition of two new Any% percent world records. On the 26th, we witnessed a DC Supervillains Any% percent world record achieved by Quasar, clocking in at a time of 2 hours, 22 minutes and 47 seconds, beating the previous record by about a minute and a half. It's good to see some action with this game and the utilization of the launches that were discovered a while ago, as well as new optimizations. The next 3.0 game to receive some attention this month was LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. This behemoth of a run witnessed some massive time saves, with Sea Domnastic discovering two 5 minute skips in the game. One skip in Rune to Manoeuvre that bypasses the entire boss fight, rendering the level the shortest in the entire game, with an IL time of 47 seconds. Another skip was found in Road to Nowhere, skipping the entire level from the first room. Seed utilized these skips and shattered the record on the boards by 37 minutes, achieving a time of 2 hours, 12 minutes and 9 seconds loadless. Seed isn't finished with this game, so stay tuned for next month's recap where the game will likely see further advancements. On the 2nd of March, the hamster found a new and improved way of skipping the toxic build in LB1 3-1 Joker's Home Turf. By positioning Robin in a precise spot and targeting specific objects, it turns out that you can perform the same skip as with Ice Rink. You have barely enough momentum to clip into the door. This saves some time on grabbing studs and obviously you don't have to make a detour to grab Ice Rink. Additionally, a Robin only strap for this level could in theory be faster, but it is extremely difficult. As in almost every month, the hamster keeps on improving on his LB1 hero story record. This time, he improved his time not only once, but twice. First on the 20th of March, with a time of 36.25, and just 4 days later, on the 24th, he achieved a time of 36.10, getting closer to that sub-36 minute barrier. 
Only time can tell when the next minion barrier is getting broken in LP1. CDM Nasdaq took a closer look this month at LEGO Jurassic World. And as always, he ended up with a bunch of world records. C managed to get record in all main categories, excluding collectible categories. The first he achieved was a no-cut world record with a time of 1 hour, 39 minutes and 8 seconds and being the first ever sub-140 run on the 18th of March. Just 5 days later, he achieved a standard world record with a time of 2 hours and 40 minutes and 23 seconds on the 23rd. The next day, he achieved yet another record, this time in free play with a time of 56 minutes and 3 seconds on the 24th, with this being the first ever sub-1 hour free play run. Continuing the grind from February, I pushed the Pirates any percent no cut records down some more, starting with a 1 hour, 7 minute and 2 second in game time on March 4th, a measly 2 second cut. Fast forward 9 days to the 13th, I get a 106.32, which was 108.49 RTA, the first sub 109. Finally, 105 is achieved on March 17th, with a final time of 105.51. To mark the end of a grind, I did a standard run instead of no cut and got a 20903 IGT, a massive 4 minute cut from the previous record. I hope more runners can pick up this game as it really is a lot of fun and very unique from other LEGO games. On the first of the month in Bionicle the Game, I found a new method of collecting the 12th Matoran in Golly's level. By doing a precise jump out of the water against the wall below the Matoran, it's possible to double jump off of the rock wall and skip needing to go the long way around, saving just over one second. On the 19th, Milkblade used this new strat on his way to a new personal best no Tahu skip time of 38 minutes and 53 seconds. Not only was this PB about the same amount of time faster as the new strat saves over his last best, but it also tied with the world record set by Rin, which is the second time these two have tied this year. While working on a new tool-assisted speedrun on the 26th, I found a relatively easy RTA-viable route for collecting Matoran 2 and 3 that was previously TAS only. This method uses a GameCube-exclusive glitch that can warp Golly up to the horizontal floor above when jumping out of the water at certain walls. This saves 5 seconds over the previous route and sets up perfectly for the optimal out-of-bounds route through the next room. In Bionicle Quest for the Toa, Rin pushed their best all levels time to sub-15 territory with a time of 14 minutes 55 seconds on March 2nd. To top off the end of the run, they nailed a frame-perfect pause that glitches the game and prevents obstacles from loading, making it impossible to fail the final section of the run. Rin then turned their attention to Bionicle Heroes GBA, setting multiple new best times throughout the month, culminating on the 29th with a time of 1 hour, 19 minutes and 37 seconds. This run was done on MGBA, which seems to lag less than on hardware, so it isn't being submitted to the leaderboards at this time, but it's still an impressive run and great to see activity in the Bionicle handheld games. Lord of the Rings sees its first record in over three years in the No Levels Early with Cutscenes category, with Dragon Ranger getting a 246.58 on March 17th, beating Dino's previous record by over 10 minutes. On March 22nd, C discovered a new drop and warp strat in LEGO Indiana Jones 1 for Temple of Kali. It saves about 6-7 to seven seconds to old strats and avoids having to take two very precise jumps. This month also had four co-op LB2 records in the any% percent no cut category by Mike the WizKid and Espio, with the last being 144.22, achieved on the 24th. And for marathon news, John ran LSW1 GBA all episodes at GDQ PAX East on the 24th. You can check out that VOD in the description. The schedule for Pace, a speedrunning meetup and charity near Baltimore, Maryland, was released this month. LEGO is starting off the event in early June, which is an incredible honor to have. First up is a four-way TCS Any% percent race between Justin, Zach, Ginger, and Jared. Then we've got some Pirates free play from Laser, a really underappreciated category with a lot of interesting skips in my opinion. Aphid is running Undercover% percent for LEGO City Undercover, and rounding LEGO out is the Hamster with LB1 Hero Story. There's also more LEGO runners not running an event that are going to pace, so keep an eye out for them. It's super hyped to get more eyes on LEGO runs, and I'm so excited to see them on the big screen. And that is everything that happened in March. If you want to keep up to date on more LEGO speedruns action, you should join the LSR Discord down below. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.